Hi there! In today's video we'll be making a logo and in doing so we'll also learn how to give a 3D effect to a shape, so let's get started. When it comes to logos, shapes with curves always pose a challenge because designers mostly find it difficult to logically blend them and make them look unique and tie them back to the business for relevance. However, for today's logo designing tutorial, our letters are K, I and L. And all these letters have straight shapes, so it's very easy to make a sensible logo out of them. So I'm going to pick the rectangle tool and drag to create a rectangle vertically. I've already thought about what I'm going to do, so I won't get into the initial brainstorming and sketching stage. We'll keep that for a later tutorial. Now once I'm happy with the size of the rectangle, I'm going to hold Shift and Option on a Mac or Shift and Alt on PC and drag the rectangle to copy it. Now I'm going to hover my cursor to the top right of the copied rectangle and you could see a bi-directional arrow which means it's in mood to get rotated. So let's just rotate it and center align it to the uh, rectangle on the left. Ensure that you have smart guides activated. You can do that by going to view and clicking on smart guides option or you can enter the shortcut command U on a Mac or control U on a PC. Now once we have set this upright, let's copy it using the shortcut command C on a Mac or control C on a PC and then paste it on front by hitting command F on a Mac or control F on a PC. Next go to the flip option on the right and click on flip vertically and you shall find the copy getting flipped here. Now we need to align it to the rectangle on top in a way that the bottom of the rectangle on top and the top of the rectangle in the bottom are perfectly aligned and make a shape of the letter L. We might have to rotate the rectangle in the bottom a bit to fit it perfectly onto the right angle of the bottom of the top one. Let's also show the ruler by hitting the command R on a Mac or Control R on a PC and then drag a guide from top and place it right at the start of the first rectangle we created. Similarly, add another guide to align it to the bottom of the first rectangle we made. Now resize both these rectangles on the right to sit within the guides. Next, select both the rectangles on the right and select the Shape Builder tool and run it over these two shapes to make them one. I think we need to slightly move this rectangle to the left because I don't really want it touching to the shape on the right. Alright, now it's time to fill in some colors. So let's color this rectangle gray and the L shape I'm going to color a shade of green maybe. Well, I'm not really very happy with this green. So let me go to the RGB mode here and uh, make some adjustments here to get my color. This is good enough, so I'm going to keep this one. Now select both the shapes and group them by hitting Command G on a Mac or Control G on a PC and also change the stroke to None. And then go to Effect and then 3D and then Extrude and Bevel. What I want is to have the L shape in 3D mode but with our settings here, only the letter L will have the 3D effect anyway. From the pop-up menu, change the position to isometric right. And uh, only the first option here will be 45 degrees, the rest to remain zero. So let me change this one here. Also extrude depth is a big number at 50. I'd like to reduce it to 30 and hit OK. So you see, it's just the letter L on the right that is in 3D mode like we wanted. Next, select the shapes and go to Object and click on Expand Appearance. And then from the panel on the right, click on Ungroup. You might have to click on Ungroup a few times. So you see now all these shapes are independent and ungrouped. 
Now, the next steps are very crucial and you need to pay extra attention here to avoid any mistakes. All right, so let's click on these shapes on sides. Don't click on the L shape on top, just the sides. Now, holding Shift and Option on a Mac or Shift and Alt on a PC, click and drag to copy the sides and release when the top of the copied version touches the bottom of the top one. Now, you need to send the copied version to back and with it selected, hit Shift, Command and Backspace on a Mac or Shift, Control, Backspace on a PC. So now your shape would look something like this. Now select this side and switch to white arrow and click on the top right corner and then delete it using the delete key or the backspace key in case of Mac. Similarly, click on the top left corner and delete it. Now do the same with the shape on the left. So we should be left with the L shaped lines in the bottom. So select the lines. Let's switch to outline mode by hitting Command Y on a Mac or Control Y on a PC and holding Shift in Option on a Mac or Shift in Alt on a PC, drag it to the top to copy it and then change the color of the strokes on top to gray. Similarly, select the strokes in the bottom and change their color to white. Now to simplify our lives, let's select all the shapes from the L on top and group them by hitting Command G on a Mac or Control G on a PC and then raise them a little so that we could see the gray lines we made a while ago. Now click on the stroke on the left and holding Command on a Mac or Control on a PC, select the white stroke right below this gray one and then go to Object and then blend and click on make. In the blend option ensure that you select specified steps and the count should be 100. Mine is already selected and set so I don't really have to do this here. Similarly I'm going to select both the strokes on the right and go to object and then blend and click on make and my shadows here are done. Now I have to do exactly the same thing, the same way to the other side of the shape as well. So using the white arrow, select the top right and the top left points and delete them. Then much like earlier, copy the line on the bottom to the top and then change the stroke on the top to gray and the stroke on the bottom to white. And then select them both and go to object and then blend and make. So now my L shape is almost ready with the shadows. Next, pick the ellipse tool and make a shape like this. And then change the fill color to gray and stroke to none. Now using the anchor point tool, click on both the ends of the shape to sharpen the corners. Now hit Command C on a Mac or Control C on a PC to copy this shape and then hit Command F on a Mac or Control F on a PC to paste it on front of this shape. Next make this copied shape smaller by dragging it inwards. Ensure that you hold Shift and Option on a Mac or Shift and Alt on a PC for a uniform placement in the center. Next, select the larger shape and change the opacity to 0% which will make it transparent or white in this case. Now select both the shapes and go to Object and then Blend and Make. Now go back to the Blending option by going to Object and Blend and then the Blending options and choose Specified Steps for spacing and the number to be 100. Now using the white arrow, select the smaller shape and change its fill color to black. And then go to brushes option and click on the small plus button at the bottom to reveal the pop-up. And from the pop-up menu, select art brush. And then from the brush options, give your brush a name should you want to. I'll rename it to gloss because we'll be using this brush for gloss, for adding gloss rather and change the colorization method to tints before hitting OK. 
Next, grab the pen tool and trace the corner as illustrated. Also change the stroke color to white and with your strokes selected, click on the new brush that you've just made and your job's done. The shine is there. Make another stroke to the edge on the right and then click on the brush you've just made. Perfect. Now let's work on the eye we have here. I'm going to click on it and go to Effects, then Stylize, and then Inner Glow. From here, I'm going to change the color to black and mode to multiply, and change the opacity to 50% and hit OK. Perfect. Now our logo is ready. We just need to add the text. Okay, so now grab the text tool and uh, type in Kathmandu and then make a copy of the text and type in Imperial Luster and let's drag it to make it bigger. I'm happy with the font, but since I'm not giving any space between these two, I'd rather make a differentiation by making Imperial as medium bold and Luster to light. Also, I'll change the color of luster to this green we have here. So let's select it and using the eyedropper tool, sample the color to fill it. Now let's increase the font size of Kathmandu and align it to the text below. And adjust the spacing as well to align it to the text below. And let's group the text and align them to the logo here. So you can see that it's a simple logo that denotes the letter K, the letter I and the letter L as well. And this was the main reason why I wanted it to not look like K, but to look like letter I and L separate, sitting next to each other. All right, guys, so that concludes our session today. I hope you've enjoyed it and have learned something new from it. So please like, share and subscribe to my channel until we meet again on Sunday. Goodbye and thanks for watching.